Hello, welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Eddard's 148 scale Harrier GR7-9. Now, this is actually the Hasegawa kit, which isn't a bad kit at all. It's one of the best sort of Harrier 148 scale that we've got out there. Um, this has obviously been reboxed in the past as well by Revel. They did a version of this one, but now Eddard have got it and they've chucked in some of their goodies. So we've actually got a very nice aftermarket ejector seat and some wheels uh, and obviously some great decals. So, usual thing. Beautiful box art on the front with the Fly Navy one, which was the end uh, when they were actually on their way out, to be honest. Okay, we've got markings friend on the box, as you can see. Uh, the item number for this one is 1166. And obviously we've got um, the nice snow scheme. Uh, then we've got the uh, Cottage Mall one from 2009. Uh, we've got 2006 uh, of uh, Coningsby. Uh, we've got the Boscombe Down one as well, which I didn't know that was in there. And uh, we've got um, the only thing that we haven't got certain markings, so we say I'm not going to go into them, but there's uh, a couple of uh, glamour models here in the UK that were on them as well during the actual uh, troubles in Afghanistan. So there we go, quick run around the box. Now, the kit itself in the box. Oh, there we go. Okay, the kit itself has been around a little while, but it is actually a pretty good kit. Yes, there's other kits coming along now, do the Harrier and do different versions of it, things like that. But this is still the sort of definitive one for the GR7 uh, version and also the AV8B, things like that for our American friends. So down in the box, it's the usual way. It's standard Hasegawa's packaging with a few parts chucked in as well, which we'll have a look at in a moment. So. Instructions first, usual thing, um, Eddard have gone right along and completely redone them. So as we can see down here, we've got the actual weighted wheels, which is a very nice touch. And we've got the outrigger uh, parts for the wheels as well. A nice resin aftermarket ejector seat down there. Full color uh, follow, uh, uh, instrument panel uh, and things like that. And we've got some more photo etch and we've got the mask set down in there. Now, as we said before, this is actually a uh, rebox from the Hasegawa one. So there is some parts you're not gonna be using because they're used for things like the AV8B, uh, different types of Harrier and things like that. The only thing that's very nice down in here, which I think we've got J and K, something we're going to talk about is called the lyrics. Now, this is something we'll talk about in a moment, but this is what I was hoping was in the kit. When I first heard about this coming out, this bit here, these parts here uh, in J and K was what I was literally waiting on. So anyway, usual thing working our way through the instructions. So because obviously you've got the Eddard color sets, you're gonna to have to make some changes, removal of some parts, putting some things down here. So we've got photo etch bits and pieces going down on there for the instrument panel, replacing them with color photo etch, which is a really nice touch, really is all this kit needs. Okay, and then obviously down with the cockpit. Then we've got these bars at the back, which are actually gonna be for the spacers, for the actual turning of the nozzles. Not totally needed, but what it does do is give you a solid uh, lump in between as well. So these guys as well, what will happen is it's like a bracing system and it makes for the wing top to go in a lot better. I have built this kit lots of times and I've tried them with and without and I always find them better with, okay? Because it gives you that right, um, the correct amount of separation you need, okay? So down in there, we've got some nice details on the side walls uh, inside the cockpit down there, so that's really nice. The front is gonna go in together, okay? Then you've got, which is the difference between all the Harriers basically at this stage uh, and the RAF nose on there for the GR7, okay? Then we've got the actual, uh, the intakes and the intake blowing doors, obviously in the power down position, they drop down on themselves anyway. Then we've got the nozzles, okay? Then we've got uh, some replacement photo etch parts going in there. This is for the puffer jets, or the little uh, uh, mini exhausts, which obviously give the aircraft stability in the hover of pitch. Uh, and roll and things like that. So that's those some details going in there. Then it's a case of popping it all together. This is where some care is gonna be needed. If you take your time fitting these in and a little bit of work here, it will save you a lot of filler and a lot of messing around, as does painting this first before you put it together. Again, quick tip, paint it all white before it goes together, then you can mask it up, put it in, and it will save you a bit of time trying to get the correct sort of painting areas down around there. Okay, so that goes in. Then we've got at the top, this is what we're gonna talk about. We'll look at the part when we actually get to it, but this is called the Lerix, or the Leading Edge Extension. Now the Harrier has two different flavors. We have the 100% Lerix, which this is, and the other one I think was called the 65%. Depending on which version you have, 
will depend on which version the Lyrix has because the GR7s and 9s, some of them have, some of them don't. So just make a, a little bit of a note about this. And this is one of the best points of this kit. All the other kits of the Harrier out there, you only get one option. You can either have 100% or the 65. The GR7 Harrier, the original boxing, only came with the 65% Harrier uh, Lyrix. So if you wanted it to have the 100% Lyrix, which is this thing here we'll look at in a moment, okay, you had to go down Alicat made an aftermarket one, or you go and raid uh, an AV8B uh, US Marine Corps Harrier because that would have the 100% Lyrix. Okay, so it's nice to see that Eddard have got the extra sprue, which means you can have both in there. There, which was my big concern when this kit came out. So it's nice to see that Eddard have thought about it, obviously along with um, Hasegawa, and they're supplying both. All right, so there we go, that's that out of the way. Then, usual thing, tail planes, uh, the various parts going down in there. There's photo etch as well, which is a nice touch, which is what I did to mine. Uh, down on there, uh, the rear puffer jet and radar warning receivers on the back, few little details in photo etch, as you can imagine, and go on down there. Then you've got the actual gear, so you've got the main gear, the tail wheel one is molded in one, so as it correctly says, you're gonna cut that off and you're gonna replace it with a resin one, which we'll look at in a moment. Then you've got the main uh, undercarriage going down and the nose wheel going on, then the outrigger being fitted on there. Aiden gun pods going down on there. Uh, again, uh, check your references on it, because only one is armed, the other one is an ammo tank for it. I don't think they actually show it. I think they have them both as the armed version on this, but it depends, you don't have to have that. You can have the fins if you wanted to, if you didn't want the gun pods on there. Fuel tanks, sidewinders, rails, more tanks, and then there we go, this is the, uh, uh, the little fins, because it needs to have one or the other with the Harrier, because uh, it acts like a skirt or a cushion like a hovercraft when it's landing and taking off. That's those points being put on. Weapons fit going in there, everything else like that. It's a decal, it's not an easy decal, we'll see um, about this one in a moment, but you've got those going on there, we've got some other nice photo etch work and various things, and obviously the heads up display being fitted. Take your time and easy, because I've built one of these before and don't use hot glues, because I ended up with a fogged up canopy, which if you watch my video build on this one, you'll see it. In fact, I don't think it's available anymore, I think it got pulled. Okay, ejector seat, this is the aftermarket ejector seat in there worthy addition to this particular kit because obviously it is a nice cockpit with a photo etch and a resin seat that's all it needs and it'll be absolutely stunning air scoops or the bug eyes as we call them that go down on the back and the things like that obviously for those a little bit of wiring decal and then obviously we've got some nice uh, masks and various things uh, to go on the aircraft as well and you can see the one for the canopy then you've got your actual masks themselves so as you can see We've got uh, ZY with that beautiful navy tail on there, the Fly Navy one, which is stunning. And then obviously we've got the other versions of them all down here as well. So we've got the Shark Nose Mouth one, okay, um, from the one from Q8. Then we've got um, obviously 20 Squadron with that lovely blue tail, okay. Snowcat, uh, sort of markings on this one from Norway with one Squadron, okay. Boscombe Downs Bird, which I must admit, Lovely to see that markings uh, and the, the decals and everything for it uh, that are here. Okay, and then obviously, as I said, we've got 41 squadrons, one from Collingsby with the white and cross tail on there, just like that. Then we've got all your decal put placements uh, for the pylons and the wheels and the various things for the stencils. And then, as you can imagine, on the back, we've got lots of stencil data uh, for those on. There's not too many on the Harrier, to be honest. So, I have to say, I'm incredibly impressed right off the bat, purely because it comes with both types of lyrics. Right, if we look at the bits first... These are your aftermarket -y bits. So I'll tell you what, I'll start with decals. We're not gonna worry about getting these out. We know they're gonna be fantastic. They're done by Cartograph. They're gonna be absolutely beautiful. No problem with these whatsoever. As you can see, lovely done. So the big notice is obviously you're gonna to have to put the white on. So you're gonna pre-spray this white, then you're gonna put the tail onto it. Okay, which is a nice touch. All right, so there we go. Very nice, all of those, no problem with those. Your mask set, that's what we were looking at before. So you've got things like for the wheels, a couple of the little instrument things uh, and things like that, and canopy. You've also got two bits of photo etch as we were saying. So we've got a nice one down in here with some of these tail ones are quite nice. Obviously the side walls inside the cockpit, they're not color, they are just gonna be sprayed in. I do them amateur gray and down on the inside mirrors, pedals, things like that. But you do have the full color one on this side. So you just say you've got the actual uh, different ones down here. It looks like you can pick which one you want down there. Okay, and the various other details, some harnesses, seat cushions, things like that, various bits and pieces. And there's also, there we go, a bit of acetate with the huds, different shaped huds as well. All right, so you're gonna be picking the particular one you want. Down in here we have the 
parts for the seat. So as you can see, beautiful resin seat. No problem with that guy at all, absolutely lovely. Then we've got the seat cushions, so we've got nice textures molded into the seat cushions as well. Nice little touches with all of those. And then just down on here, probably not a lot of point getting these out, but we've got those outrigger Olios, no problem with that. Then we've got wheel hubs, beautifully done, tires, and they've got little flat spots on them as well, which is very nice little touch. Very nice indeed. Okay, so let's just pop these back before I lose them. And to be honest, I've always said that a quick, easy upgrade for any aircraft is a resin ejector seat and a color photo which cockpit. Perhaps you were listening. That's it, but you know. Right, let's try this week if I can't cut the finger off. Ugh. Okay, bigger bag. So, if you haven't seen this before, um, it's your usual very sharp, crisp, easy to crack plastic, very hard, but the detail is absolutely beautiful on this one, okay? So looking around it, as you can see, pretty nice uh, all in there, no problem with that at all. It's nice, correct shape. The only thing you do have is an underbelly into this. Lining this up can be a little bit of a, a tricky thing, but the, the strakes uh, or the Aiden gun pods that are gonna come down in here do go over the gap, so don't worry about it too much, okay? But again, very nice. Pegasus engine with the blades down in there. Obviously you're gonna be painting all that white. You've got the actual air scoops, some nice details on the side. The cockpit tub out of the box, but obviously you're gonna be going around and doing that all again. Okay, so that's A. B, basically you've got the underside. You can catch it in the light. Got some details down in there. And again, some very nice stuff on with the Harrier. No problem with any of that at all. Down on the inside, no problem. You have got ejector pins. Sometimes they get in the way, but a quick swipe with a uh, stick will get rid of those. One side of the tail, as you can see, very nicely done. We've actually got the weapons pylon you can see down there. That's the nose wheel back door on, the actual instrument panel. I don't know if it is for that one. That might be for the A8B actually. Um, and then obviously the main pylon molded in one on these. Okay, very nicely done. These guys down here, this is your blowing doors. They look fiddly, but actually they're not too bad at all. Okay, it's not actually a problem. These here, we've got the uh, photo etch ones as a replacement, but these are the blades on the sides of the tail planes as they join the fuselage. Okay, and then obviously you've got the nose wheel back door down there. Uh, this one down here is literally, you've got sides of the seats, but you're not gonna be worried about those. Center pylon, some of the handles, the wheels, uh, the various parts down in here. And then these guys down here, the funny shape as they should be. These are the cross members we were talking about for moving the nozzles in one. Okay, but actually they work more as a spar that crosses right over. Up front controller on the cockpit, there's a photo etch, color photo etch replacement one for that as well. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Then in here, okay, so underside of the wings, as you can see, there's no real detail, but then they don't in reality. Okay, so that's it. The big thing you notice, there is no drop flaps on this, which is always a shame. It's really hard to make it do it as well. If you're thinking about cutting and doing them yourselves, yes, you can do it. Yes, I have seen people do it. They've done a fantastic job, but it's a lot of work, okay, to actually drop the flaps on this thing. But generally, you've got the side, the skirts there, the strakes for the underside. Very nicely done, all of that. Top of the wing, this is the trouble. When you try and drop the flaps, you need to drop the center section as well, so it all rotates and goes down. Let's say it's not an easy one. You've got the vortex generators uh, to actually spill the air on the top, which gives better control uh, movement over the control surface on the top, okay, right the way through. Very nice, very fine details, riveting details right the way down on these. As I say, I've built this kit many times now, and I absolutely love it. Tail planes, as you can see, one piece, no problem at all. These are the side blast doors, which obviously protect the side of the fuselage from the rear nozzles on the Pegasus engines. Okay, down there, but you can see, it's not too bad. It's not a busy kit. Okay, that we're gonna to keep to one side. We'll talk about that in a moment. So, forward part of the fuselage. Okay, this is the cockpit section, all the rest of it just as you imagine. Air to air refueling probe, no problem there. Then we've got some of the other uh, smaller parts down on there, the actual speed brake, back of the canopy. Okay, this is the underside, it actually is all moving and the top part, okay, on the other side of the fuselage and exactly the same on the underside. No problem with any of that at all. 
that, I tell you what, if I try and be clever, I'm just going to put that one there. Okay, so this is another one for the actual uh, area. So we've got the other side of the tail. Don't paint, it's supposed to have the hole there. It has a, a pitot tube type thing comes off of that. Then we've got the actual main pylon, uh, one of the outer pylons, okay. There's your instrument panel, which obviously you're gonna shave all of that off and replace it with color photo etch. Nose wheel section. These are the puffer jets for the wing tips. Uh, they're gonna be molded. They drop on the bottom just like that. Okay, and these guys down here, these are the doors for the actual outrigger wheels, okay. So although the wheel hangs out the back, actually the um, main part, the gear itself, the pole bit, uh, is actually hidden, okay? The all important GR7 nose, so it has the flayed top on there, goes to the point, you have the two strikes underneath there, goes through, that's these two down the bottom here, gonna fit under here, and then on that side there, as you can see, very nice detail on all of those. Okay, pylons, two piece pylons, these are the air-to-air -air missiles, which is the difference between the GR7, GR9 to the other AV8 Harrier family, you get the extra two pylons, okay? Giving this thing nine pylons in total versus the standard five, okay? And then other little bits, you've got the tail, this is the very end uh, piece of the tail going on, other pylons, as you can see, making your way through, down the bottom, underneath the actual uh, tail itself, Okay, and this is the top part. We saw the puffer jets on the other one. These are the top parts of it. And as you can see, that's where the bottom parts are gonna fit on there. Okay, right the way across. Gun pod, okay, which is right the way through. Uh, as I say, one feeds to the other side um, and things like that on these, or is it separates? It may be separates on this one. I don't know if the Aiden carries two. I know, obviously, um, I think we've run out of bullets for it, didn't we? I don't know. I'm sure somebody in the know knows more than me. Okay. Duplicate up on the next one. Basically what we've got down here is the wheels, which we obviously we've got aftermarket ones now. Fuel tank, okay, take your time with it. It's all recessed details on this. A nice uh, sidewinder. Not too sure about the actual uh, fins on the front, if it's supposed to be a lemur or a mic. Um, I think it should have a little bit slightly different there. Okay, as I say, exhaust. I do believe you can get aftermarket exhaust for this. One piece cast resin now as well. Unfortunately, not available in the kit. This is your outrigger. As I said, you would cut that clean off at this break here and replace it. Now, I'm assuming you could drill and pin uh, and actually have it in there so you've got a little bit of movement with it. Pylon, obviously, for the Sidewinder missile and the other fuel tank. And as I said, we get two of those. Now, the big thing with this kit, uh, as we said about, is we get this, and this will hopefully make a little bit more sense to you. So as you can see, this one extends right the way to the front and right the way to the outside. This one only comes in a small part, and you've got a gap. This is this side is the 65% Lerix. Okay, pretty much standard with all the Harrier family before GR7. Okay, but it depends if it was upgraded or a new build, if it had this one, which is obviously slightly different, it's a lot bigger and it has the 100% Lerix. This was always the trouble because depending on which markings you went with, depending on if you had the correct Lerix. So it's absolutely beautiful now that Eddard have included both in the kit. So you can now make the choice and it basically means you can build any Harrier you like from the GR7 uh, and uh, 9 family right the way through. And for those of you asking, no, there is no GR8. Never did one. Okay, that's what it is. This one here, I do believe, is the one you don't use because it's the, um, both say AV8B. Uh, this is the other one, I don't know. One of them you use, one of them you don't down there. This down here, these two tiny parts are the actual, just in front of the actual tail fin. It's a little air scoop that goes down into the back. Okay, but there we go. That is those two. Really nice to see they have done them and put them in properly. Uh, and it gives you that option because it was always the stalling point. And to be honest, it was always the point where somebody would always say to you, you do realize you've got the wrong lyrics on that for the marking because it happened all the time. Okay, the clear parts. Unfortunately, you are gonna get a center seam on these guys. Um, so you have gonna to have to polish out the center seam on this side and the center seam down on that one. Apart from that, all the other small little glass parts as you can imagine are down on there for the various navigation, nose wheel lights, heads up display, but obviously you're gonna rip that out and probably use the acetate one instead. Okay, so you can see, pretty much nicely done all of those right the way through. The other thing you get is a couple of poly caps. This is for the nozzles uh, so they can move and everything else like that. And there we go, a really nice kit. I built this kit, in fact, I was trying to work out how many I've built, I think I've built five. Um, so if I build this one, it'd be number six. Uh, 
it goes together really, really well. A couple of things you want to make sure of. One is the seam line as this top area completely drops in. Sometimes you can have a little bit of problem just as it meets the back, okay? Some careful dry fitting, testing, uh, and making sure you take your time with it will cure that problem. But trying to drop this part in afterwards can be a little bit of a headache. So maybe you want to just take your time with it um, and then obviously dry fit it. Some people attach this front larynx to the wing, then put it in. Other people put it in and then drop the wing in. Either way, this line here, the one behind the cockpit, or the one behind the larynx is where you're always gonna have a little step. And then also this guy back here. It's really the only problem with the kit. The underside one is quite hidden away. Uh, it's still a problem, but just taking your time, getting that larynx to sit in there perfectly uh, will save you a lot of trouble. But just don't go straight in with the glue, dry fit it, test it, and everything else, you'll be absolutely fine. The front end goes on very well. Um, the only bit of advice I can give these intakes as well, don't mess around with them, just glue them in and sand and polish them in then you can just rescribe on the edges where is needed um, rather than trying to get them to fit perfectly. But again, paint them and mask them before you fit. That way you can just put it in there, pull the masking tape off once you sprayed the gray on and it's all done. Trying to put it in afterwards, it's quite a complex curve. It can be a bit of a nightmare, but if you've got it down in front of you, you can just do it in one and you'll have no problem with it at all. Apart from that, the rest of it goes together an absolute dream. I have to say, especially with the two lyrics like this, it is definitely a worthy addition to anybody's stash because now you can make any type of GR7 and 9.